then, um, in the general news, uh, Circle Punch had a lot of fights going on this weekend. They had two in the UK, unfortunately I didn't manage to meet up with them or see them or anything like that. Uh, but their two fighters did very well uh, down south. I know that um, Pat Curran certainly won, can't remember the name of the other one, but he won as well. Uh, at home they weren't uh, quite so lucky. Um, Philip Wyman uh, lost, I think it was a decision. Um, he's broken his nose in that, so uh, I'm sorry that he lost and I do wish him all the best there. Apparently though he, he did break the ribs of the other guy, so you know, all is fair as they say in Love and War. So, um, the other thing is that my favourite Sucker Punch fighter outside of Jens Pol, but of course, that uh, Levon Maynard also lost. Now, this was quite a controversial loss as I hear. It was a decision, probably a political decision. Um, he didn't get the finish, but he did seem to dominate the hometown favourite. Couldn't finish, they gave it to the other guy. So, you know, I'm sorry to hear that as well. Uh, WEC 47 predictions will be up very shortly, so do check them out. Um, and this is my last full week at work uh, before I have a week's holiday in honour of my birthday. So everything is uh, fantastic there. Prayers. Uh, we're praying as ever for Rob, who is my sister Rose's friend. He is a bomb disposal expert out on deployment with the British forces in Afghanistan. Um, and I'd also like to call uh, for prayer over those people affected by the very, very large earthquake that has hit uh, the country of Chile. Apparently it was uh, more than an 8, 8.8 I think on the Richter scale, uh, and so big that um, it caused quite a tsunami that sort of rushed across the Pacific, um, sending a lot of people uh, on major alerts, including Hawaii. We have uh, patrons on the forum in Hawaii, um, I do believe that uh, actually it was all alright and that the uh, tidal surge was not too large. Um, but let us pray still for, uh, for those that have been um, duly worried by it and those of course affected in the country itself. In September 1997, uh, my granddad, um, Edward Norman Clipsham, he actually went by the name uh, Norman, he used his middle name, uh, who is my maternal grandfather, uh, he died. He died of uh, secondary cancer, which ended up being uh, terminal when it got to his brain. He'd had bowel cancer many, many years before. Um, this was the first time that I had uh, encountered um, death on a sort of um, a close, close scale, so to speak, um, and it had quite a profound impact on me. I call the period uh, that I went through after his death the first questioning, because it was the first time that I had uh, been forced to question what I believed on a spiritual basis, uh, other than confirming that I was a Christian. I believed um, that I would never see him again, and this of course threw me into doubt over thoughts about uh, the afterlife, about heaven and stuff like that. During the Christmas of that year, um, his, his widow, um, my, my grandmother, she bought me a relaxation tape by um, Terry Oldfield and uh, it was based on Psalm 130 which is known as De Profundis, Out of the Depths um, and it's worth looking it up uh, and basically it, it took nearly a year but I found a lot of solace in, in, in that scripture and uh, the next Next spring I started uh, my own little vegetable plantation and in the summer uh, my grandmother came and she helped me and we talked about it and, and I was able to actually sort of say, you know, I can um, embrace this um, idea that there is a, an afterlife, you know, there is a heaven and that I will see him again. And this is where things move on quite quickly because in 1999 um, things became very, very difficult indeed. Um, at that point in time I was going through my adolescence and um, there were various things that were becoming sexualised. Um, one of which um, was, if we, if we remember back to last year when I was telling you about 1996 and having self-harm um, issues, those issues arose again and 
um, they became sexualized uh, as well. So they were now not only a, an issue of, of stress and an issue of tension and an issue of um, you know, obsessive uh, and compulsive um, problems. They were now also interlinked with uh, my sexuality um, as who I discovered I was. Uh, and to my horror, um, I discovered that I, I had same-sex uh, same attraction, um, which bothered me. Uh, obviously, being a Christian, you know, there's absolutely no doubt in um, either testament, the old or new, that um, homosexuality, in terms of acts, is a, an absolute no-no. It's absolutely condemned. Uh, the laws of Leviticus are, are very, very straightforward, um, and Paul, in his letter to the Romans, you know, equally so. It doesn't say that you can't be afflicted with the feelings of um, same-sex attraction. Um, it doesn't say that the feelings in themselves are sin, but it certainly says that any um, action on them at all is sin, and that is the um, the, the line that I took. Um, I decided, you know, that it would be a life of celibacy, and it would be an area, uh, like a lot of others, that um, I would just suppress. Um, and it seemed to me that that, that worked quite well for, for several years. Um, one such place that I was involved with was a place called Sherbourne Road Community Church, which was a free church that ran something that was called uh, the Alpha Course, which is a, a great British invention um, of uh, the Reverend Nicky Gumbel, who we like to say Humble Gumbel. I was to meet him uh, later on, um, during my time at St Paul's in fact, and um, I would do this uh, with a, a group of people there. And it became something that the church did quite regularly. As soon as they finished doing the course, they'd start it again. And it would be the same people um, <laughs> that went through it time and time again. I'm really an alpha veteran, to be totally honest. And this church was to be um, two things. It was to prove a, a great challenge to me, and it was to prove much later on to be a great, um, a great stronghold and a, a great comfort to me. The, um, the challenge it gave me uh, was again a period I call the second questioning which was another year this was uh, from the middle of 2002 to the middle of 2001 um, and this was uh, when you get to the part in the Alpha course where you have to go on the away weekend uh, to somewhere else it's sort of on a retreat and um, it has a bit on the, the Holy Spirit and you know the, um, the Pentecostal idea of being slain in the Spirit which Happened to everybody else apart from me. I was stood there like a lemon. Uh, nothing happened to me and everybody else sort of was receiving all these gifts and all these revelations, etc, etc. And that made me feel absolutely um, hopeless and absolutely useless. And um, it got me very frustrated. And again, that was something that I, I basically used as an excuse to sort of say, well, actually, I don't have a clue about Christianity at all. So after um, about a year of questioning uh, once more, um, I had been speaking this, this particular Sunday with uh, my parents and they had pointed me to um, something, a passage in Deuteronomy, which is basically the Choose Life passage. It says, um, words to the effect of, you know, uh, I set before you um, two choices, you can choose life or you can choose death. Um, you know, I've set before you curses, I've set before you blessings, it's up to you to decide which one you choose. That, um, along with, of course, the Psalm um, 130 from the first questioning, those two are really my, uh, my, my biblical passages that I have made my own, if you like. They're the ones that are, are quite important to me. Um, and so uh, I'd been debating this with Mother, you know, in the morning. And in the afternoon we went to church. And I remember we, you know, we piled in, we stood in, in our rows. Uh, this was in St Mark's Church, Harrogate, in fact, where my uh, father was sort of helping out. Um, and uh, this, this woman came and she stood right in front of me and emblazoned on the back of her shirt was these two words, Choose Life, in, uh, in big letters. And um, after the service, she was talking to me and my mother, and she was saying, you know, I'm s terribly sorry, I arrived late, and, and all I could do was show you my back. And I remember travelling home, and my mother going, you know, you really have to learn to, to listen uh, on a spiritual level, because um, God is not usually that blunt with somebody.